Well, good morning. This is Pastor Harris, Christian Bible Chapel, and welcome to our, our family children's uh, Sunday school class for our children and teenagers. And we thank the Lord. Let's begin our lesson. We are coming from Matthew chapter 6, and we are dealing with the Lord's Prayer. Sections, we're sectioning the Lord's Prayer for our kids. So gather around the kids as well as the parents. And join us. All right, here we go. Praise God. This has been a video for the Lord's Prayer. We're teaching our children about the Lord's Prayer. And since our children already read the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and the Gospel of Luke and Matt and Mark, let's uh, go right into one phrase, one page, one of them. Uh, and it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. That's what we're going to deal with this morning. All right. That's Matthew chapter 6. Verse 12, that's what we're going to look at today, all right? And in that, it says this, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's what we're going to look at. Now, let's kind of break that down, that word, that big word, debt. Let's read it again. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our those who sin against us. So this morning with our children, uh, we're going to talk with the power of God in the life of a child as well as an adult how to uh, how to forgive okay how to forgive let's let's uh, let me see let's break this down now we're gonna have Douglas uh, talk to us in two segments about um, uh, why we should forgive and what forgiveness is all about so we're gonna look at that and we're gonna look at why we should forgive and what is forgiveness? Okay, let's uh, let's start it at the beginning here. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about forgiveness and why we should forgive people. You know, there are lots of reasons why we should forgive other people. You know, one of the most important reasons is because God forgave us first. And if God can forgive us for what we've done, then we should absolutely forgive others for what they've done. You know, there's a big difference between us and God when it comes to forgiving people. Because God does not need to forgive us. If you ask for forgiveness, he'll give it to you. He will always forgive you, but he doesn't have to. And you and I need to forgive people. And it's not just because it's like God says, you need to do this, and so you better do this. He does say that we should forgive. It's very important to forgive. But it's not just important to forgive because God says so. It's better for you if you forgive. Now, the other day I was at school, and there's this kid at school, and he's kind of a bully, and he is always, you know, trying to pick on me and do these mean things. And, and uh, the other day... I was sitting in the lunchroom, and I was sitting at the table, and I had my food, and he comes up from behind me, and he grabs the bottom back two legs of my chair, and he pulls out the chair from behind me, and I kind of, like, pushed me forward down into my food, and everybody was, like, laughing, and I had food in my face, and I was so mad. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get mad, I just get really flustered. Like, I don't even know what to do. Like, I had my food in my face, and I everybody's laughing at me, and I just didn't even know what to do. I just 
sat there with you know spaghetti dripping down off of my nose and he just laughed and moved on well i didn't move on i was still mad and i was mad all day all night all i was thinking about this kid now he, you know made me and he didn't want to face in my food and, and he was so he was so mean to me and I, and I was so mad at him but you know i was remembering that you know since god forgave us we should forgive others so i thought to myself yeah I'm going to forgive this kid. And so the next day at school, in the cafeteria, you know, I had my lunch, and I was about to go sit down at the table. I had my tray full of food, and I saw him sitting at his table, and I walked over to him, and I said, you know what? I forgive you for smashing my face in my food and laughing at me yesterday. I felt, like, really proud that I had, you know, done this very mature thing, and I had gone, and I had forgiven him. And then you know what he said? He just looked up at me, and he was like, I don't care. And he hit my tray of food and spilled my chocolate milk all over the place. And I was, again, I was just like, I didn't know what to say. I was just looking at him like, you know, why would he do that? He wasn't even sorry for doing that mean thing to me the other day. You know, why am I going to forgive him if he's not even sorry? So then, if I was mad the day before that, I was really, really, really mad that day. Because, because you know, I mean, I, I forgave him. That was such a nice thing for me to do for him, to forgive him and, you know, not, like, push him back or something like that or, or you know make his food spill all over the place and I did this super nice thing for him and he didn't even care it was super nice of me to forgive him right well you know I think it was a good thing for me to forgive him but it's also an important thing for me to forgive him because you know I went home that second day after him you know also spilled my food that day and I was so mad I was even madder than before and I was just furious because I was like well I can't forgive him now because he's not sorry that's for sure he's definitely not sorry I realized that that me forgiving him isn't all about what's good for him. It is good for him for me to forgive him, but he doesn't need to ask for my forgiveness for me to forgive him. He doesn't even need to be sorry at all. But if I don't forgive him, I'm just gonna be mad forever. You know, the Bible talks about this thing called this, this root of bitterness. And the Bible says, don't let a root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble. You know, I definitely had bitterness in my heart, for sure. I was so mad at this kid. And because I was so mad, I was just bitter inside my heart. And to get rid of that, I needed to forgive him. Not for his sake, but for mine. He doesn't care if I forgive him. But when you forgive people for what they've done, even when they're not sorry, you can start to heal your own heart. You don't need their permission to begin healing. And you don't need their permission to forgive them. You can forgive people even if they don't want your forgiveness. And really, once you do, things are going to be much better for you. The only person who gets hurt when you are, are angry and bitter all the time is you. And when you forgive other people, even when they don't deserve it, then you can begin healing from the inside out. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would forgive those who have wronged you. Forgive those who have hurt you, even if they don't deserve it. Not only because God forgave us when we didn't deserve it, but because forgiving people is better for you. It can help you feel better. The only person that gets hurt when you don't forgive someone is you. You and I can and should forgive others even when they don't deserve it. Not because it's what's best for them, but because it's what's best for you and me. Hey guys. Alright, now, uh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, you know, children, children, especially um, when someone breaks your toys or someone smash your toys or like in an episode here in which in the, the, uh, what happened in the cafeteria towards children you know you can have bullies um, in the classroom and um, bullies they mess with you they bother you and they disrupt your train of thought actually and when that happens you get upset as a child you get you know, some some of us, even I myself, when I was little, we would get see see Douglas handled that uh, very well. <laughs> um, if it was me, I think, and being honest, I would be fighting by now. <laughs> yeah, we would be tussling on the floor by now, and, and the thought of being suspension or put into the coat room or or, see, but, uh, or getting disciplined by the teacher or going down to the gym getting disciplined by the other teacher and then go home and then being um, uh, beaten by my mother and then when my father get home you get another whipping and my aunt and uncle found out it then you get another whipping <laughs> yeah that was the furthest thing from my heart from my mind so therefore the whole point in which Jesus is saying as Douglas was saying 
forgiveness towards your mom, towards your dad, towards your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents, your friends, your schoolmates, your teacher, anybody in the community. Forgiveness is when you do not hold that person accountable for the wrong that they've done, even though they deserve it. You heard me? Because, see, uh, we are guilty, guilty before God. God does not have to forgive us, but he does. He is so merciful. He is so forgiving and kind and tenderhearted. Oh, boy, he is unbelievable. So when he says, and forgive us our sins, now notice what Matthew is saying here now. He says, forgive us our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. Now notice, uh, children, teenagers too now, parents, listen, we need to forgive because if we don't, bitterness, angry, frustration, and a lot of other things is going to begin to power up the longer you hold your forgiveness. I mean, I've heard stories. I've sat down with people and talk with uh, children, teenagers, and adults that even after they have grown up, they are still angry with their sister for 20, 30 years. They have spoken to their sisters, their aunt, their uncle, or whoever for 40, 30, 20 years because of the wrong they inflicted on them. See, this is not only a children thing. It is all for all people. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. A debtor is a person that owes you and they are wrong for what they have what they have owed you. They refuse to forgive. That's why they call it a debtor, because they owe. They won't, they won't come to you and forgive. So you have to forgive them. See, that's why it says, forgive us our debt as we forgive. See, it's, see it is highly 80% that they will not ever come to you. Just like what Douglas says, and seek forgiveness. And then when you do forgive them, they don't care. Just like the guy that treated Douglas in our episode here. So, but it's upon you to forgive your mom, your dad, your little sister, your little brother, your big brother, your big sister, your aunt, your uncle, your, your, your niece, your nephew, your, your grandparents, your grandmother, your grandfather, you know, when people do you wrong. See, that's the whole point of the lesson today wrong that people do to you when people do wrong to you God wants us to forgive them now let's go further before we look at our second episode with uh, uh, Douglas here now does that forgiveness um, does that mean that these, the, pe the person the person will um, forgive you not on the case no, not 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 really, um, because the thing is that they may not even forgive you. Right? They they may not even forgive you. But the point is, the point is, um, God still wants you to to forgive them. That's that's the whole point of it. Okay. Now, um, let's go to another episode here with, with Douglas. <laughs> This is crazy. <laughs> okay, let's go to another episode of Douglas as we explore what the Bible says, forgive us our sins as, as we forgive others. That's a, see, forgiveness is a very hard thing to do. It's, it's, it's a challenging thing. And it's, a, uh, it's a very hard thing to do, but God wants us to do it. And you know what? 
when God says, I want you to do that, He will supply the strength, the power, the will to do that. He's not going to leave you alone and say, okay, you're on your own. You know, forgive this person. I'm going to back out the scene. Take your time. Muster up the strength to do it. No, He will give you the necessary uh, strength, the necessary power to, to forgive a person. Okay, let's look at the second episode of this with Douglas speaking again about forgiveness. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, it's me, Douglas. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a really good day. Um, cause I just, I just came from my friend's house. Yeah, we always have a really good time. Um, but last time I went over there, I learned a really important lesson. You see, the other day, um, we were playing at his house and he got this brand new, awesome, remote controlled car. And it was so fast and we were just, we were driving around in his basement. It was just vroom, 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 vroom. It was just whizzing around all over the place. It was so much fun. And and we were playing with it, but then his uh, his mom called him upstairs. And so he had to go, but but he said that I could play with the toy while he was gone. So yeah, I was just driving around in the basement, just vroom, 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 and then bang. And the car crashed right into the wall and busted into a billion tiny pieces. Oh man, I was so scared because you know I don't have a job or anything. I can't pay for a brand new remote control car. So I just tried to scoop it all up and I put some glue on it, but that didn't really work. It was just this gloppy, gloopy mess. And, and so I thought maybe some duct tape because that stuff always works, I guess. But that, it didn't work. It just it made it all sticky and gross and sloppy. And oh man, I was so scared that he was going to be mad at me and that he would never ever forgive me. And so I hold him coming down the stairs and I, I walked right up to him and I said, I'm sorry I broke your car. Will you please, will you please forgive me? It was an accident. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. And and he, he looked at the car and yeah, he was, he was kind of sad, but he went, oh. Oh well. Well, I mean, it's just a toy, Douglas, so, so yeah, I, I forgive you. And I felt so relieved. You have no idea how happy I was that he forgave me. I felt so good. I, it just put me in a great, fantastic mood. And so I was just, you know, feeling good, and I, I went home after that, and, and I walked in the front door, and what do I see on the floor? But my most favorite action figure in the whole wide world with his head popped right off. Just laying down on the floor all broken. And I knew, oh what I knew who did it. It was, it was my little brother Steven. Because he's always messing with my stuff. And I tell him not to, but he does it anyways. And it just, it drives me crazy and so I called him downstairs and I, I was like, Steven, did you break that toy? And, and he, he kind of looked up at me and he said, well, yeah, no, but I, I did. I'm really and I was, I was playing nice with it, but then it, he just, he just broke. Douglas, I'm so sorry. Will you, will you please forgive me? I was like, mm -mm, nope, I will not forgive you. I did, I, I did something bad. Yeah, I just, I, I pushed him right down on the floor because I was so mad. I just shoved him. And so then he, he started to, started to cry and, and then my mom came downstairs and, and she was like, Douglas, why is Stephen crying on the floor? And I said, well, he's crying on the floor because it was all his fault. He, I pushed him because he, he's always messing with my stuff. I told him not to, and look, my action figure was broken. And it actually turned out that I you could just pop the head back on, and it was fine. But then, but then my mom said, she was like, well, Douglas, it's never okay to push people. Besides, I mean, it's just a toy. 
Why when she said that? When she said it's just a toy? That reminded me of something. See, when I broke my friend's toy, he forgave me. And he said it's just a toy, I forgive you. And I felt so relieved, so blessed that she forgave me. And I don't forgive my brother. And what would it be like, you know, if God was like me, instead of like my friend? You see, we do bad stuff all the time. We do stuff that makes God sad. And when we do bad things, that's called sin. And what if every single time we sinned, God was like, well, that's it for you, and it was just a lightning bolt, and that's the end of us. That would be so bad. Because we do, we sin all the time, like every day, everybody does. But you see, God, God loves us so much that he will always forgive us, no matter what. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, so that we could live forever with, with God in heaven. And it doesn't matter how bad you think the sin is, or how many times you sin, God will always forgive you. And so that's kind of what I learned, is that, that we need to forgive other people, because God forgave us folks. Well, I'll see you guys later, and don't forget, God will always forgive you, and he loves you very, very much. Okay, so here we again, we are dealing with Matthew's version. Again, in Matthew chapter 6, the key factor here we're pulling out is verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Once again, uh, Douglas is relating to us the power of forgiveness which comes from God. And when we uh, forgive, we release a person from the wrong that they have done to us. All right. Now let's have prayer. Let's go and have prayer. All right. Let me switch this around here to our sister here. We're going to have prayer and close out our session today. <laughs> Again, parents, we ask you later on today to go over this most important lesson in dealing with forgiveness. Read to them Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 12. Let them go over it. Talk to them. Ask them if they have any questions. And maybe uh, at that time, they may tell you something that's going on in school or what happened to them. Be open, open-minded. Be uh, uh, courteous. Be involved with them so they can know. Uh, that they can be able to share with you 
some of the things that uh, that uh, they need to forgive, whether it's someone in their classroom or uh, 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 any given situation that took place in their lives. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for our class this morning, for our children. We pray that you will abundantly, dear God, give us the strength, the will, and the mind to always stay focused on you, to trust your your judgment, to trust you, that you'll, you'll watch over us, you'll take care of us, you'll keep us and guide us, and we thank you for it. Father, bless parents, Lord, that they would be diligent, diligent to um, take the time with their children to explore the Bible, to read the Bible, to pray with them, their children, to talk of God in their lives, and we thank you, Father. Help children to be obedient to their parents, to nourish and cherish, cherish their parents right now while is their time. We're thankful, Father, for this opportunity, and may we continue to um, equip our children in the spiritual things of God because God wants us to do that. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. At 10 o'clock is our Bible class for our adults. So, Mom and Dad, come on back. And at 10 o'clock, we have a Bible class for students. Everyone's certainly uh, justification. God bless.